And good afternoon, everyone. This is Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor. My name is Jim, and this is the Friday Afternoon QSO VLOC Network. This is a directed network, and I'm Net Control. If at any time during this net, should an emergency arise, please notify Net Control, and we'll stand by and allow those in need to access this frequency. Is there any priority or emergency traffic at this time? And hearing nothing, we will continue. This net is all about ham radio and being all that you can be. That's what our QSO V-Line network is all about, trying to help people receive and achieve the best sounding station possible. Thanks for dropping by. FYI, my background is 50 years in commercial broadcasting, where a lot of big bucks are spent on audio processing equipment and getting it set up correctly to get the loudest, fullest sounding station possible. Well, long story short, when I became a ham radio operator, I could hear immediately a large discrepancy in on-air technical proficiency. A lot of stations were running with very poor mic equalization, very muddy, with little articulation. And as I continued to work stations, I realized most of the stations were also running very low average peak modulation, many around 30% of average peak modulation. So with my background, I felt I could help, or at least try. I knew that most modern day ham transceivers did have enough onboard processing equipment to be able to overcome most all of the problems. So it would just be a matter of developing a generic dynamic range setup procedure and then adjusting the onboard EQ gear. And so I started the QSO VLOG network with the phrase, if you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. And today we're currently featuring over 1,800 QSO VLOG air check recordings. Our mission statement for the network is to establish a higher technical level of radio transmissions of the human voice by the intelligent utilization of available electronics in current amateur radio transceivers. Our setup, while generic in nature, converts the average 10 dB dynamic range transmitter with an average 30% of peak modulation to a much fuller 3 dB dynamic range with an average 80 to 85% of peak modulation. This substantial boost in audio transmit level is extremely beneficial Official in high noise levels and heavy QIM. It allows you to punch through when others fail. The second part of our transmitter setup has to do with proper mic equalization. We're looking to optimize the transmitted voice for a higher degree of intelligibility through the use of EQ patterns that bring out the articulation aspects of the human voice. Again, why need to hear the voice if you can't understand the words? Also this afternoon, on the receive side, we're running four internet SDR receivers, monitoring New York, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and Virginia trying to get the best signal from our 100 watt friends. Now the audio from these four SDR receivers comes up on a six position rotary selector. Also in the selector is our local receiver audio. And today, a local receiver is running three large 10 foot vertical magnetic loop antennas. One aimed at zero degrees, one aimed at 90 degrees, and number three is aimed at 134 degrees. In addition, two of the three may be rotated separately. They're selected by a six position rotary selector. Also today on the transmit side, we'll be running our no SWR specially oriented dipole antenna. One leg of this dipole is broadside to Montreal, Canada. The other leg is broadside to Miami, Florida. As we were constructing our station, our mantra was 20 over from Montreal to Miami with a hotspot through the Carolinas. And although conditions may vary, the general performance of this antenna supports its mission. Also today, we'll be running our input source indicator. So when we switch from an internet SDR receiver to our local receiver, you'll be able to hear the switch and see the switch. You'll have to check it out on our YouTube QSO Vlog video. And as we come together for another Friday afternoon QSO Vlog network, let us pause just a moment for the amateur radio operator's prayer. Lord, we pray for clear 20 over S9 communications today. Let all our transmissions fill the air and reach their destinations QSA5 to be understood by all. And as we pray for good radio conditions, let us also pray for good human conditions. Let us pray that uh, during this time of pandemic that has challenged us all, 
that you will protect everyone, especially our elderly. And also, Lord, we seek your divine intervention to bring peace to a very divided United States. As we go through a very conflicting time in America's history, with dark clouds all around, we pray that you will reduce life's daily political QRM between our brothers and sisters. And through your love and guidance, show us the way to find peace and harmony. Help us to communicate with one another 20 over S9. Thank you, Lord, and God bless and protect America. Amen. To continue, since this is an area of the band where we have many nets trying to operate in a very confined area, I would appreciate all stations checking in to Accuso V like net to keep their band pass to no wider than 100 to 2900. Again, please, no wider than 100 to 2900. This is the Friday afternoon QSO V-Like Network. And now let's check in and see if Charlie, K1GZL, is on frequency to bring us up to date on the latest 40-meter band propagation. Charlie's QTH is up north in northern New Hampshire, near the Canadian border. Charlie, got a copy? Yes. Got a copy? Yes, Jim, a uh, beautiful copy. You're running 9 to 10 over at direct. Uh, of course, we do not have that capability on HBR at this uh, location. Mostly uh, cloudy out with some sun breaking through at 67 degrees. Two days ago, we had uh, two and a half inches of rain. So we've had about seven and a half inches for the whole month. And uh, 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 normal for the whole month is about four inches up here. So uh, just showing a slight uh, the change in the leaves are beginning to show up a little bit. If you have a good copy, I, I, I got something from Captain Mike. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, sir, I have a beautiful copy. It looks to be about uh, 12 to 15 over on Rochester, New York. 15 over on Rochester, New York. Okay, uh, Roger, Roger. And uh, uh, this might be a week or two old. I haven't been able to uh, uh, work in uh, since I was. Uh, with a uh, 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 cardiac, uh, 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 an aorta synopsis, uh, which was uh, where the valve goes into the heart. But I had a new valve replacement, a new valve replacement, and uh, we're slowly uh, gaining back our strength. But here is Captain Mike. Wait a minute. He, by the way, he's flying out on Tuesday. So I'll pick him up west to east uh, this next Tuesday. Here we go. Charlie, we're just over at Des Moines, just past Des Moines at uh, 34,000 here. Uh, we're showing about 467 knots right now across the ground with uh, looks like about another 1,280 miles to go. Uh, temp up here is uh, minus 44 degrees. And uh, I did speak with uh, uh, Chuck out there in uh, Prescott, uh, A7CBB. I'm not sure if he's on now, but uh, I, I told him we'd be on here in a, in a few moments. Charlie, you're in 59 plus here. We're looking at about uh, 30 miles, 35 miles to the uh, west of Omaha, just north of Lincoln, Lincoln, Nebraska. Okay, yeah, there you are. Uh, so uh, uh, most of the first part of that was west to east. Uh, west to east, heading toward uh, uh, Philadelphia there. So, back to you, Jim. I hope you copied, and you sound uh, great in here. Always perfect audio, uh, just like you're sitting uh, right next to you, uh, uh, right, right, right next to me. KC9, BKV, K1GZL, Clarksville, Northern New Hampshire. Roger, Roger, Charlie. Well, I, you know, I said I was on uh, Rochester, and I looked, and uh, uh, I was actually on Milford. Uh, yeah, a lot of times I'm not really looking at where I'm going. I'm just listening to the sound, you know, and and uh, you can, you know, I just go for the hottest signal. And uh, I have a new, uh, a new, uh, um, what should I say, display on the set uh, this uh, Friday. And it is an antenna input display. So when I'm on my local radio, uh, I have a six position rotary switch that I can pull up my horizontal dipole or loop one, loop two, or loop three. And uh, we have uh, room to expand. Then we have two more that we're going to be adding a, a, a vertical. And, uh, you know, we also already have a spare. So uh, we'll be initiating that uh, display uh, for this Friday. Roger. Display uh, for this Friday. Roger. Okay, well that sounds uh, great. That sounds great. And uh, I can't get over the technology 
uh, that we've had and what has developed uh, over the last even 50 years. It's just incredible uh, what is happening computer-wise, digital-wise, and all kinds of ways. Uh, and your signal is uh, just beautiful in here. To the uh, west of Omaha, just north of Lincoln, Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, yes, uh, this uh, Friday. And it is an antenna input display. So when I'm on my local radio, uh, I have a six-position rotary switch that I can pull up my horizontal dipole. Okay, I hope that one came through, uh, Jim. Casey, I, I won't hold it any longer. We'll try to be on next uh, week. Uh, if I miss it, it's because uh, I'm, uh, I have to go way down to White River Junction, Vermont, uh, unless that changes and have uh, uh, my eyes uh, worked on. So um, uh, I'm hopeful on all of that. KC9, VKV, K1, G, Z, and an L. Roger, Roger, Charlie. Well, I'll call for you, and uh, if uh, luck's with us, uh, you'll be able to join us, and if not, uh, you'll be doing something uh, very important and uh, uh, be joining us probably the week after that. So let me say uh, 73 up that way, Charlie. Always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Charlie. Always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it is a pleasure all the time, uh, Jimmy. You do a marvelous job, a marvelous job on helping out uh, people that uh, do rigs and uh, so on and uh, how to get that modulation and everything balanced uh, on the sound uh, going out. Okay, the very best, Jim, and uh, hope to catch you next uh, week. KC9 VKV, K1 G's at all. We are clear. Roger, Roger, Charlie, 73, sir, and have a great afternoon and a beautiful weekend. This is the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network. Uh, I'm uh, Jim, Juliet and your mic, and uh, better known in some circles as Dr. VKV. And we're recording now live till 5, so if you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. We'll post this recording up on YouTube in the next couple of days. So when you go to YouTube, just do a call letter search for KC9VKV, that's Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, and that will take you to our QSO Vlog page. Uh, and on that page, you'll be looking at over 1,800 QSO Vlog uh, uh, recordings. But if you just want to hear uh, today's recording, if you go to YouTube and do a KC9 VKV call it a search, along with today's date, 91721, it will refer you directly uh, to this recording. So uh, there you go. And uh, so let's get on with it. Uh, if anybody's got a radio they want to check out, give me a shout. If anybody's got a radio they want to check out, give me a shout. Uh, W4, Japan, uh, Papa Delta. Japan, Papa Delta, go ahead. Uh, that's uh, Pete. And Papa Delta, go ahead. Uh, that's uh, Pete. Yeah, uh, very good, uh, Jim. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good to hear you, 5-9. Uh, uh, and just checking out my uh, backup uh, 7300 here on a different mic. It happens to be a high ICM. And I uh, thought I'd take advantage of your great service. Good to hear you. K9, uh, KC9, uh, Victor, Kilowatt Victor from W4 Japan, uh, Papa Delta. Go ahead, Jim. Roger, Roger, Pete. Well, I uh, was on uh, Milford, and uh, since it was you, I knew you would be blowing my antenna apart, so I went to my local receiver, and uh, you you got to be somewhere around 20 over or so. And again, uh, just a beautiful, uh, broad uh, frequency response, uh, uh, well uh, past 100 uh, cycles on the bottom end. Roger? Roger, Roger. Oh, very good. Well, I appreciate that, as I said, just setting it up for this particular mic. Over. Roger. Now, uh, what mic is this one? Uh, the Heil ICM. Ah, oh, Roger, Roger. Well, that sounds really good. Now, uh, do you extensively EQ? Well, you know, on a uh, ICOM, it's just treble and bass, so that's all you can do. <laughs> uh, yes, but it how, it's how you hone the two, you know, and uh, it's interesting, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, my theory is that uh, equalization occurs uh, bet between when you strike a balance between mid-range to the top end and mid-range to the bottom end. And that much is so in that uh, the 7300 and the 7610 don't even bother putting in a uh, an adjustable mid-range control because they want that to be flat because a lot of people will uh, tend to boost the mid-range and it's so much harder for the top end and the bottom end to uh, strike balance then, Roger. 
Yeah, I know. I've got a, um, a Kenwood 890 with an 18 uh, uh, band uh, graphic EQ, and uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, Roger. Now, I, I just, uh, <laughs> that is, uh, well, gosh, uh, unless you had just a spectrum analyzer sitting right by your side, uh, to tackle that uh, would be uh, Pandora's box, Roger? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, uh, you have to work at it. Yeah, so the simplicity personified, I think, with the uh, the two band EQ, it just uh, you know, um, uh, gosh, it couldn't be couldn't be simpler. And uh, by uh, explanation, you you have done a, a perfect job with it, Roger. Yeah, Roger, um, I've got the bass at uh, uh, plus one and the treble at plus four, so and uh, not a lot of processing, uh, maybe five uh, dB on peaks, and that's it. Roger, very full, very full, and nice always. So, and um, we are recording as always, and uh, so if you go to YouTube and do that call it a search for Kilo Charlie 9 Victor Kilo Victor along with today's date, 7 uh, 9 17 21, it'll take you right to this recording, Roger. Okay, Jim, really appreciate it. It's always a pleasure, and uh, I'll let you get on with the uh, rest of the group there. Uh, W4JPD clear. Take care, buddy. Roger, P73, sir. One of the uh, the highlights of my um, afternoon is when uh, Pete checks in with this beautiful audio. This is uh, KC9 VKV, the Friday afternoon QSO VLOC net. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. W9EVT, Washington Island. EZT station, come back slowly phonetically with your call sign. Surely. This is W9 Echo, Victoria, Tokyo. W9EVT, my name is George, we're on Washington Island, been on the, uh, on the air continuously from 1936. W9EVT, George. Yes, sir, uh, George, and, and just exactly where I is your location specifically? Well, I, I'm a, I am on a small island 300 miles directly north of Chicago, and uh, we are about uh, uh, three or four miles off of Lake Michigan, which is Washington Island, is a small island, 35 square miles, and has a population uh, uh, during the summer of a couple thousand, maybe 700 during the winter. I've been up here since I retired, and uh, when I was 75, I uh, gave my company to uh, my employees and came up here. I have the largest uh, classic radio collection in the world by maybe four times, approximately 2,000 radios. W9EVT, George. George, now, now how do you store all those radios, 2,000 radios? How do you store them all? I have three buildings, but a large ham shack. You can check me on QRZ later. Yes, sir. Now, how do you decide which one you're going to run for the day, and which one are you running now? I'm on a classic, uh, which I uh, of a 5,000 of the A2, which I bought uh, about six months ago. Uh, I uh, checking all the radios. I found that the classic 5000 was produced by by Yesu for many years and didn't change much. Uh, this one was the last offering. They called it the classic, uh, and it is a, a very nice radio. It has quite a few audio control adjustments. I, my favorite radio is in my my uh, Kenwood uh, 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 and the Kenwood uh, uh, five uh, nine ninety, uh, which. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, when it stopped working on single sideband, I sent it to them. Uh, they uh, they charged me $150 for looking at it. I stated in a note that they couldn't find what to do. I had three letters written and, and, and a face internally and on top of the unit what was wrong and what needed to be repaired. But apparently never they never found that. Uh, they charged me $150 plus air shipping back to me. I had a total of about almost $3,000 uh, to do nothing. I am going to be sending it uh, to another operation, which I hope will treat me better. W9EVT, George. Roger. Well, you know, it, it's so hard to find a, a good man these days that uh, knows what they're doing on, on radios. Now, is that, how old was that radio? About a year. 
Ah, uh, well, no no excuse for that. No excuse at all for that. Now, you get some of those uh, old tube types, uh, 40, 50 years old. Uh, you know, you, you got to, you know, uh, give somebody a little leeway on fixing those, Roger. Roger, Roger. I, as I say, uh, with uh, I have probably another 800 that need work on them, uh, and they go all the way to the first radios. I had uh, the gentleman who owned Hallercrafters give me some of the first Hallercrafter radios that were made, and I had the same thing with Collins. Uh, Art Collins gave me a number of radios, and uh, again, uh, there's been a, a terrific... A, a, a terrific influx of hams, but most of the new hams, uh, since they uh, abandoned code, uh, they also abandoned technical aspects. So you get on the internet, order a radio, and you plug it in. You don't want to bother with the instructions. That's too complicated. And uh, you work it the way they send it to you. And uh, just like the 7300, which I also have here, uh, basically, uh, it usually works when you just plug it in. But if you're a little bit out of adjustment, there's no one there to adjust it. W9ADD. Roger, Roger. Well, you know, it, it really is hard to make a 7300 sound bad, Roger. It's an excellent for the radio. I paid $900 for mine, uh, including a 115 volt power supply and was very happy with it. I recommended that for, for people with limited income. Roger. Now, did you also in your collection have uh, the uh, 7610? Yes, I have all the radios all the way back. <laughs> oh boy, I just, I'd love to come see your, your collection. I, you know, I, I need a jolt uh, into reality. I think that's what it would happen if I saw your all your radios, Roger. Well, don't come down. We still are medium COVID. On the islands, we have about uh, at least a dozen cases of the 900 people that live here. We still have active COVID. Most people have had their shots, so COVID is not killing them, uh, but is not uh, bad. I do not take visitors since the COVID thing started, and when they come here, I talk to them uh, through uh, through the door. I open the door and they stay on the porch or on the ground, and I said, come back when COVID is gone. Uh, most of the people that visit don't visit with masks. Go get high in EDT. Roger, Roger, George. Well, listen, thanks for dropping by. Pleasure to meet you, and uh, I wish you all kinds of luck on that uh, island. I think you're in the, the ideal place, Roger. Well, I don't know if there is such a thing in an ideal place, but I enjoy... Uh, Again, I've lost some power here. Was... Yeah, I lost my amplifier. I have an, uh, an alpha amplifier. I have to find out what went wrong with it. And it takes a four-hour, four-minute countdown. But I'm running about 20 watts right now. So I'll let you go and uh, take a look at QRZ uh, under my car. You, you, you could be interested or not. Remember, Roger, Roger, George. Well, you'd be interested to know that even though you lost your amp, your audio did not change at all. I've been uh, had you uh, calibrated at zero level on peaks of voice, and uh, did that did not vary even though uh, you uh, lost lost uh, power, Roger. Roger, Roger. Well, conditions are pretty good between Washington Island and your location. This is the first time I've tuned to your location. I'm on other nets and other groups. I will go here to the Upper Peninsula net, which is a Michigan net. Go here to the Upper Peninsula net. Which I'll try to return and listen to yours. W9 EBT. Yes, sir. Well, we have uh, various different ways of uh, monitoring uh, the world. We uh, run with four Internet SDR receivers uh, monitoring uh, uh, New York, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, Georgia, and uh, Virginia. And then we have uh, three 10-foot uh, vertical magnetic loops that are uh, rotatable and uh, selectable. And then we have a display that, that shows all our comings and goings as we manipulate our, our antennas and our input sources. So uh, it uh, is uh, quite interesting. We just added our antenna input uh, display. Uh, this will be the uh, shakedown cruise for that. It's, uh, we have those coming in on a six position rotary switch. And as we rotate the switch to select the antennas, we get a lamp lighting in our, uh, our display, antenna input display. Roger. That sounds very 
interesting. I'd like to be able to see that. Uh, thank you very much for coming back to me, and I'll look for you next Friday. Yes, sir, George. And if you would like to hear your audio, we are also simultaneously recording a uh, uh, vlog that we'll post later on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for KC9VKV, that's Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, followed by today's date, 9-17-21, that will take you uh, directly uh, to this recording on a YouTube search. So 73, George, you have a great afternoon and a beautiful weekend. Well, this is the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Net. My name is Jim, known in some circles as Dr. VKV, and we are recording now live till 5. So if you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. This is the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Net, and uh, gosh, uh, we're just uh, tuning around here. Uh, uh, our Milford uh, SDR was down, so we have to um, to bring that off uh, or up back up. Milford has a way of uh, dumping you off if you do something, and dumping you off if you don't do something. <laughs> I I never can quite keep up, so I keep getting dumped off. But luckily, um, I was quite concerned that I would be fiddling with these uh, SDR. Our, uh, receivers uh, all the time and being distracted but after a while you kind of just uh, have it uh, second nature to, as to what you need to do to bring the uh, the SDR back online so this is the Friday afternoon kiss of you like net if you have a radio you want to check out give me a shout so if you like net if you have a radio you want to check out give me a shout Interested to uh, check out our uh, three uh, ten-foot vertical magnetic loops. Uh, we have one at zero degrees, a preset at zero degrees, one preset at 90, and one uh, preset at 134 degrees. So uh, rather than actually rotate them, uh, trying to uh, track down uh, signals, uh, we have the uh, geography kind of divided uh, so the uh, loops can function in a uh, stationary position, which is and then be switched as in a, a scanner a receiver status. This is KC9VKV, the Friday afternoon QSO VLOCNET. QSO so VLOCNET. Uh, station LVA, come back slowly, phonetically with your call sign. Slowly, phonetically with your call sign. Yes, sir. Uh, well, give me about uh, 10 or 15 seconds to tell me about your antenna system, and I'll look around and see if I can find us a better path, Roger. You can find us a better path, Roger. Okay, sir. Very good. Uh, the antenna I believe 80 through uh, 6 meter uh, off center fed dipole. And uh, it's up about 40 feet in the air. And uh, we're just running uh, 100 watts into the wire. Uh, Kenwood, uh, the TF2000, I believe it's, uh, it's getting pretty close to uh, 20 years old. I want to say I purchased it in about 2003, so we're, we're, uh, we're getting there. Uh, and the MC60 desk mic, uh, I believe it was purchased back in 92. It was originally, uh, it was originally hooked up to it. Uh, anyway, so that's what we're running here. We're about, uh, 45 minutes north of Augusta, Georgia. Uh, in the city of Aiken. 
Alpha Indy, Kilo Echo Mode. Roger, Roger, LVA. I uh, didn't get your name. What's the, the handle there? Roger, Roger, LVA. I uh, didn't get your name. What's the, the handle there? Uh, Jared, is that a Roger? Uh, Jared, is that a Roger? That's correct, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I've uh, listened to your audio uh, kind of uh, coming and going today, but I did have a few uh, a few uh, seconds here of uh, good, uh, uh, nice, uh, crisp uh, audio, and um, I couldn't uh, hear your audio very well. Uh, I think that you may be, you know, we have a, set, a generic setup procedure that just works wonders for fattening um, uh, transmitters. It uh, usually takes a, a normal uh, 10 dB dynamic range, 30% uh, average peak modulation uh, radio to a, uh, a 3 dB dynamic range with uh, average peak modulation between 80 and 85%. It does start with the uh, compressor. We do recommend the, a 3 on the compressor. I think you might be up there around a 7 or so, and it does seem to try to suck up between the words, and if you take a pause, it, it, the level does come up almost equal to your to your voice level. So uh, we do recommend just a 3. It's a, a very... Um, uh, minimal amount, but it does precisely uh, what it, uh, you know, what we needed to do. Roger, Roger. Uh, what it, uh, you know, what we needed to do. Roger, Roger. Okay, very good. Yeah, I'm not running any compressor. Uh, compressor is off completely. Um, maybe, uh, maybe I'm just a little too close to the microphone in my uneducated uh, uh, opinion here. I'm. I am driving that uh, ALC up uh, quite a bit, I suppose. Um, so I wonder, uh, I don't know if this, uh, maybe that'll help a little bit to uh, see if that's any different. Uh, kilowatt one Lima Victor Alpha. Yeah, so that's what it was. You were you were pushing your ALC. What we normally recommend is uh, that you engage the compressor at a three. It's a token amount. You'll never hear it on the air, but it uh, it solves a lot of problems. Uh, so uh, you know, if you're interested in the setup procedure, it would start at a three on the compressor. Then you move to your ALC with the mic gain in hand, and uh, as you uh, speak fairly rapidly, 100, 200, 300, um, you're adjusting your ALC for mid scale to two thirds operation uh, by way of the uh, mic gain control. Mid scale to two thirds level on your ALC by way of a uh, mic gain manipulation. Roger. On your ALC by way of a uh, mic gain manipulation. Roger. Okay, very good. Very good. Uh, let me See, kilowatt one Lima Victor Alpha K1 LVA. Uh, any difference there? Yes, sir. It's uh, not nearly as uh, compressed. And, and, uh, you know, my theory is that um, a 3 dB dynamic range uh, transmission is a, a nice compromise uh, uh, as far as uh, getting uh, the words uh, out. If you go past that, you start the words start to blur, and you start defeating your purpose of uh, communication. So, uh, you know, a 3 dB dynamic range is what we're looking for there, and that occurs uh, when your AOC is uh, running between mid scale and two thirds and then we usually move on to the uh, the uh, equalizer page and uh uh, you know, in, in your situation, maybe we could uh, crank in a, just a couple of uh, clicks additional top end EQ for um, intelligibility and articulation, Roger. For um, intelligibility and articulation, Roger. Okay, sir, very good. Uh, yeah, so I'm about, uh, I'm peaking about two thirds uh, into the ALC. As far as equalizer goes, uh, equalizer on this radio is uh, not too sophisticated. Uh, I can give it some high end or I can give it some low end, uh, and that's about it, uh, unless I, uh, uh, hook up the, um, uh, the, uh, the software for, uh, for, uh, customizing the, uh, the, the built-in equalizer here. Um, let's see here. Uh, I have some high boost here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, that's high boost. And then, uh, the low end boost. 
one two three four five five four three two one over Roger well take your uh, your bottom end back to where it was uh, take your bottom end back to where it was and I'm, I'm copying the mail on the uh, Arlington SDR and the Arlington SDR is the only SDR I have found that uh, has uh, frequency response on the bottom end down to 100 cycles most all of the other SDRs in the neighborhood roll off at about 250 cycles so uh, this uh, this particular SDR the Arlington SDR does uh, uh, go down to uh, 100 cycles so uh, where you had your uh, base in the uh, in the beginning is just the perfect uh, uh, place so just rack that back to where it was when we started uh, our QSO and then uh, for the top end uh, just advanced uh, maybe two clicks uh, uh, boost from where you were when we started just uh, two clicks boost uh, from where we were uh, as we started our QSO Roger uh, from where we were uh, as we started our QSO Roger I copy that. Um, yeah, that, that's where I cannot fine tune. Uh, I can either I can either add high end um, or uh, or take it away at this point, uh, which is off here. Uh, but I cannot uh, currently cannot customize it. Uh, you know, gently. It, it's either it's an on or an off at this point, sir. Uh, I see another radio designed by Glenn Close Enough. <laughs> That's a fictional character in my life. Um, I had this coffee pot that every time I wanted a cup of coffee, I would pour my cup of coffee, and, and as I poured it out of the, uh, the coffee maker, it would spill. And I said, that, that was designed by Glenn Close Enough. I can see them all in the board meeting, and they showing this new uh, coffee maker, and it spills, and his, Glenn says, well, close enough. <clears throat> but I, I think, you know, that people should have the ability to, uh, you know, to, uh, to dial in what they want. But I understand the situation. So you've got your base pretty much back to where it was, which I think I heard that come in. And uh, so now it would be just a lot of curiosity. Why don't you hit that high boost, and let's see how much it is of curiosity, why don't you hit that high boost and let's see how much it is. Okay, sir, very good. This is the, uh, this is the high boost. And uh, the uh, ALC is about uh, two-thirds, peaking a little bit over every now and then. But uh, this is the high boost here. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. And uh, yes, I, uh, I used one of those coffee pots the other day. Uh, just yesterday, in fact, and uh, it almost went in the trash. It was <laughs> it was quite aggravating, uh, but it makes a good cup of coffee if you can get it to go in the mug. I don't uh, I don't understand it, um, but uh, yeah, Glenn, close enough. That is uh, this radio again. Uh, Kenwood gives you the option uh, to fine tune if you use the uh, uh, well, what was it? Uh, ARCP software, I think it was, ARCP 2000, uh, you can go in and fine tune, but uh, I do not have the software. Um, so uh, this is the high boost. Back to you. Roger, Roger. Now, I, I think I've detected you moving around on your proximity to microphone. You know, we, we have that thing called uh, proximity effect. So it's very important that we uh, consistently address the microphone at a specific distance. When we start moving around, our, you know, our EQ starts shifting as we come closer or further away from, from the microphone. So when we started, I think you were maybe about uh, three inches away from the mic, and then as uh, we continued to converse, I, I think you might have backed off the mic just a tad. Continued to converse, I, I think you might have backed off the mic just a tad. Uh, it is quite possible. Uh, which which would you prefer? So right now this is probably about three inches, four inches away from the microphone. That position is excellent. Uh, that's the way I would run that radio and that microphone just like that. Roger? Uh, that's the way I would run that radio and that microphone just like that. Roger? Roger, Roger. Okay, very good. Yeah, it's a comfortable position. So, fantastic. Outstanding. Uh, Sir, if I could, let me get your call again. I know the uh, the end there was uh, or the suffix was VKV. Uh, my uh, short-term memory loss is uh, blocking the prefix. Roger. Call sign is Kilo Charlie Nine Victor Kilo Victor. 
KC9 VKV. Name was Jim, Juliet, India, Mike. And uh, we are recording this, so if you would like to go to YouTube and do a call letter search for KC9 VKV, uh, it will take, along with today's date, 9 17 21, it will take you uh, to this recording. It'll probably take us a, a couple of days to get it uploaded to YouTube, Roger. It'll probably take us a, a couple of days to get it uploaded to YouTube, Roger. Outstanding, Jim. Well, I definitely appreciate your help. Uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, digital modes lately, uh, just kind of exploring uh, just uh, different things I can do. Uh, but uh, uh, never really got uh, a chance to uh, to have a professional like yourself kind of hone me in here on what I could do with the uh, professional like yourself kind of hone me in here on what I could do with the uh, with the audio. So uh, I do greatly appreciate your time, and uh, you know, love a good rag chew. So uh, figure if I'm going to be uh, uh, chewing the rag, I, I want it to be as uh, as easy on the ears as possible. So uh, I, I greatly appreciate your time here, sir. And uh, you're uh, not taking a beating. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, but I really do appreciate your time. Um, KC9 VKV K1 LVA. Roger, Roger, Jared. Uh, well, I appreciate you dropping by, sir. And uh, uh, like I say, we're starting our new um, display for um, our antenna input. We've had a um, uh, audio input uh, display for quite a while on the lower right-hand side, but uh, uh, today we're coming up with our antenna input display where we have a, a six-position rotary switch and uh, we can move between uh, uh, horizontal uh, dipole uh, and uh, three uh, ten-foot vertical mag loops spaced at uh, zero degrees, 90 degrees, and um, uh, 134 degrees. So uh, just to keep it interesting. So uh, let me say uh, 373 that way, uh, Jared, and uh, you have a great afternoon, beautiful weekend, and thanks for dropping by, Roger. Roger, Roger, sir. Yeah, I would uh, love to check that out. Wouldn't mind that. Something similar to that. Uh, get a couple of uh, uh, offset uh, dipoles going. I just I love a dipole just for the fact that uh, low visibility and uh, easy maintenance, easy to build. And uh, I've worked the world with them, so I, I love the uh, love the dipole. Simple, simple. Okay, sir. Again, greatly appreciate your time and uh, uh, your efforts here to uh, to straighten me out. Uh, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor. Kilo Victor. Uh, pleasure to meet you, sir. Kilowatt 1, Lima, Victor, Alpha, 73, from Aiken, South Carolina. Roger, Roger, Jared, 73, sir. This is uh, KC9VKV, the Friday afternoon KISO vlog net. We are recording now live to 5, so if you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Kilo 4, Kilo 4 Tango, Charlie, Julia, Portable 4. The uh, portable station, uh, come back slowly and uh, phonetically with your call sign as I try to find my pen. Uh, come back uh, with your call sign, sir. Pen. Uh, come back uh, with your call sign, sir. Uh, Kilo 4, Tango, Charlie, Juliet, Portable 4. Roger, uh, TCJ, and uh, what's your location, sir, and name, sir? And uh, what's your location, sir, and name, sir? Roger, we are in Gold Hill, Gold Hill, North Carolina, and the name is Ray, Romeo Alpha Yankee, a portable four, QSL. Roger, Ray, and uh, what radio are you running today, sir? Ray, and uh, what radio are you running today, sir? So we're running the Elecraft KX3, along with the Elecraft KX3 pan adapter and the KPA 100 and, uh, amplifier. The antenna is on Seven foot airstream. QSL. Uh, Roger, I was uh, just uh, tuning uh, one of my antennas. What, what did you say about airstream? Repeat that, please. What did you say about airstream? Repeat that, please. Well, Roger, the station is in my airstream. I'm running portable from the airstream in Gold Hill, North Carolina. Ah, yes, sir, uh, Ray. And uh, so are you self-sustained uh, power-wise, or are you, um, uh, how are you getting your power for your uh your RV there. Power for your uh, your RV there. Uh, we have 600 watts of solar panels on the roof, 
going into a Vicon MPPT uh, controller, and that uh, charges the three Battleborn lithium ion phosphate batteries for 300 amps. Ah, Roger, Roger. So, and uh, are you running uh, uh, how much uh, power? Are you running uh, uh, how much uh, power? Uh, right now we're running 110, 110 watts. Oh, Roger, Roger. So you're you're not losing any power. You're actually gaining uh, uh, probably uh, 300 watts uh, uh, per hour as you as you talk on that radio because of your charging status, Roger. Radio because of your charging status, Roger. Well, the uh, right now. Hang on one minute. I, I, I'll uh, pull up the app. I can tell you how much we're charging. Um, it's going to be, of course, relevant to our location and the sun angle, but right now we are currently uh, charging uh, 9.5 amps into the battery system and uh, 135 watts is what's being calculated this time. Roger, now that's minus the power being consumed, Roger, is that correct? Minus the power being consumed, Roger, is that correct? Uh, negative, that is the out the uh, 9.6 volt, 9.6 amps is the output from the solar panels going into the batteries. At this time, I'm pulling the other app up to see what we're doing here. At this time, we're actually um, putting 4 amps into the batteries. We're, we're absorbing the rest of the current in our transmission. Ah, uh, Roger, Roger. Yes, it is always uh, uh, Rob Peter to pay Paul and, and how that system. I, that's amazing, though, you know. Uh, some folks, uh, you know, can really take advantage and uh, you, with solar, you know, up to the point of being able to, um, to run um, kilowatts of power consumption without uh, actually losing anything from the battery. It's all being consumed by, uh, all being furnished by the incoming charge uh, rate, I guess. Yes, if your if your controller can handle that kind of uh, uh, power, it's it's just amazing to me. I've got a a, um, a, a former ambulance that I've converted to an RV, and it starts uh, with a 200 amp uh, Lee Neville alternator that uh, can you know you can uh, pull quite a bit of power off that in a boondogging situation uh, uh, in uh, uh, just uh, you know over a period of an hour or so uh, uh, you can uh, run like a kilowatt and still have uh, plenty of power left Roger kilowatt and still have uh, plenty of power left Roger uh, Roger it all depends on the batteries though if you don't have a good storage capacity doesn't matter how much you can generate, if the, the batteries can't store it correctly, and these lithium iron phosphate batteries are uh, are, are just amazing. Uh, they, I have a full 300 amps. Uh, actually, I have 295 usable amps of power, and before the voltage drops below 12.2 volts. Uh, Roger, Ray. Eh? Okay, I've been listening to your audio, and uh, that you're running a K3. Is that a Roger? And uh, that you're running a K3, is that a Roger? That's a Roger with the stock microphone. Now I'm running the KX3, the, the small one, the small KX3. Ah, roger that, roger that. Well, we have a setup procedure generic uh, that uh, we could uh, probably um, uh, increase your level just a little bit. It starts with the compressor engaged at a 3. It's uh, a token amount, but it does uh, exactly what we need it to do in the scheme of things. Uh, so it does start with the uh, compressor engaged at a 3, and then we'll move on to the ALC, roger. 3, and then we'll move on to the ALC, roger. The gain right now is at 65. The gain is at 65. That you're speaking of your microphone, uh, Roger. Well, what we need to do is uh, look at your ALC, and it uh, the whole trick is uh, the microphone level. Uh, readings are inconsequential. Uh, it is uh, rather the effect that the mic gain has on your AOC reading. So we want to set the AOC reading at mid scale to two thirds. 
And in order to do that, uh, you'll have to speak rather rapidly to get that meter up to be able to see what it's doing. So we say 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. It's kind of, kind of a, a quick clip uh, uh, and uh, cadence and uh, to get that meter up. And then with the mic in, in hand, adjust your ALC then for mid-scale to uh, two-thirds uh, uh, fluctuation, Roger. To uh, two-thirds uh, uh, fluctuation, Roger. Okay, I think I understand what you're saying. I'm not sure any, um, I'm showing my compression right now at about 10, and the ALC jumps in occasionally about 50% scale. Roger. Now, uh, just uh, one word on the microphone that you're running, sounds like you're running a handheld mic. What you want to do with that handheld mic is pull it to the corner of your lips and talk across it. Do not talk uh, directly into that mic uh, as you'll get a lot of uh, uh, voice transients in there. So uh, pull the mic to the corner of your mouth and, and talk across it. That'll minimize any kind of uh, uh, voice uh, trash, Roger. Uh, voice uh, trash, Roger. Okay, Roger, I'm doing that right now, and uh, like I say, the, the ALC is coming up now to over, about 50 to 60 percent, and the uh, compression is about 10 on the scale of 1 through 10, or, or 1 through 20. See yourself? Okay, uh, so probably I might want to drop that. Uh, uh, do you have an input level control for your uh, your compressor processor? For your uh, your compressor processor? I may have one in the menu someplace, but I'll have to get the book out. To, I don't use this enough anymore to really memorize the menu. I've got so many other things I'm doing right now, but um, the compression, like I say, is, is a scale of 10 on the scale of 20, and the ALC is about 60% 60 per, about 60 on the scale, on the, on the meter. Roger. Uh, give me a dead key for about three or four seconds. Just key it, don't say anything for about four seconds, Roger. Seconds. Just key it, don't say anything for about four seconds, Roger. Yeah, your um, your background level comes to a zero level, the same as your as your voice level. So uh, we need to uh, to turn that back. Uh, you don't have any way of uh, backing down the uh, the effects of the compressor as far as input level or whatever. Effects of the compressor as far as input level or whatever. I probably do, but I got to get the book out. It's just a reading. I just had this station completely taken apart. We put new countertops in the airstream yesterday, so I'm just getting things back together again now, but I've got Fred Caddy's book out here, and I'll look through it real quick. Uh, that's all right. That's all right. Just uh, go ahead and turn your compressor off. Uh, like I say, uh, three is not anything that you're going to hear one way or the other, but it's just technically what it does. So, But you can turn that uh, compressor off, and then uh, go back and check your ALC for a mid-scale to two-thirds, Roger. ALC for a mid-scale to two-thirds, Roger. I've got the compressor up on the screen now that says 8, but I've, I've got to figure out how to turn it down. Uh, well, we could, like I say, we could just, uh, if you would like, uh, till you have time to uh, further study the situation, we could just uh, t turn the compressor off and uh, uh, press on, Roger. And then at a later time, when you figure out uh, uh, the yin and yang of that compressor, you can put it back in. Uh, ultimately, uh, again, we go back to the ALC. Uh, we want the mid scale to two thirds with the compressor in or out, Roger. Mid scale to two thirds with the compressor in or out, Roger. Okay, Roger, I've got to get into the manual here and figure out how to do all that. Roger. Well, note to self, uh, you know, let, right now let's just turn the compressor off and make a note that uh, you're going to uh, study that uh, at a later time and, and so we can go double check our ALC for mid scale to two thirds with the compressor off. For mid scale to two thirds with the compressor off. Okay, I'm just trying to find it in the manual here how to turn the compressor off. Um, I'm still looking. <laughs> oh, Roger, Roger. Well, gosh, uh, one of those moments, uh, you know, um, God bless them, uh, the menu makers. Uh, you know, some things I think would be a lot nicer if they would just make the manual controls. It's it's just uh, sometimes very difficult when everything is menu-driven, Roger. Very difficult when everything is menu-driven, Roger. I totally agree with you. You said it 
very clearly, and uh, you get 100% of votes here for sure. Roger, I'll tell you one other one, and that is uh, the little bow things. You know, the thing is, when you're just learning how to operate a device, it takes you a little bit longer to um, run through the sequences when you're just learning. The Bofeng, uh, you can set it somewhere, and if you don't do something with it, it goes back to where it, where it was. You know, and that's uh, that's terrible for somebody trying to learn this radio. If you don't uh, respond within two or three seconds, that radio says, you're stupid. I'm going back where I was. And uh, it's uh, that's what makes learning that radio so much more difficult. That's what makes learning that radio so much more difficult. Oh, Roger, Roger. Okay, I did find it, and the compressor now, compression is down to zero. Is that any different? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't have... Uh, uh, you know, a suck up there uh, tr trying to, you know, wind up hearing the neighbor beating his wife in the back room. You know, that compressor is, you know, it's not compressing, it's not pumping, it's just laying there like like a good radio should. All right, so uh, now that we've gotten past the compressor for the moment, go ahead to your AOC with mic gain in hand, and as you speak rapidly, 100, 200, 300, adjust your AOC for mid scale to two thirds by way of mic gain control. For mid scale to two thirds by way of light gain control. Okay, 100, 200. I saw no ALC at all, nothing on ALC at all. Okay, it just came up that time about, about three quarter scale. Yeah, and that was just, uh, I got, uh, just processing my uh, uh, Milford. Um, uh, SDR, which I was monitoring you on, and uh, so I lost your last part of that transmission. Um, so, uh, uh, what happened uh, last time? What happened uh, last time? I said I'm showing about two thirds, or about one half, or so compression on the scale occasionally. It was comp on, the, on the ALC is about two, two thirds scale with the compression turned off. GSL. Yes, sir. That's and that's the way I would run it to you. Uh, to you delve in further in the book and uh, try to uh, figure out what's going on with that compressor and how to control it. So that sounds good. Now, uh, uh, do you know where your equalization page is on that radio? Equalization page is on that radio? Uh, yes, in the menu, I'll go through there and try to find that. I think the equalization is set pretty flat right now, if I'm not mistaken. All right, uh, let me just give you a note to self. Note to self, uh, if when you find out where the uh, EQ page is, we want a three clicks uh, treble boost from where you are. Three clicks treble boost from wherever you are at the moment. Roger? From wherever you are at the moment. Roger? Okay, Roger. Three clicks of treble from where we are at this time, correct? Yes, treble boost, three clicks uh, from where you are, and I think that'll put you a very uh, nice articulated audio, Roger. Nice articulated audio, Roger. Okay, Roger, I'm going to the menu now and try to find it. Well, that, that's all right. I'll, you know, I hate to, for somebody to be under pressure, so just uh, make those notes to yourself, and you can, um, you can do that at your leisure, Roger. You can do that at your leisure, Roger. Any pressure. I'm just going through here and I appreciate your help. I'm taking advantage of your help. Roger. Well, I, you know, I've given you notes there, and if you follow the notes, uh, you'll have um, a good success. Uh, so, you know, when you find out how to control that compressor, we're just looking for a 3 out of 10, a 30 out of 100, uh, you know, only about uh, oh, a third of its capabilities. Uh, 3 out of 10, 30 out of 100, roger. 10, 30 out of 100, roger. Okay, roger. I'm uh, just going through the, through the uh, menu now. I'm starting to get a little blow-by here from somebody that, uh, you know, we've been uh, an hour on this frequency, and uh, they've decided to go uh, 2KC off in... Uh, uh, start a transmission. So, uh, you know, whatever. Anyway, uh, so, uh, Ray, do uh, you still have a copy of this, sir? Ray, do uh, you still have a copy of this, sir? Uh, roger, roger. Good copy. Let me try you on uh, 
couple of antennas here. Come back and give me um, about 10 seconds uh, about your antenna system, Roger. Now, but I uh, driver antenna on the car hill missing lay mount mounted on top and bonded to the airstream. So I'm using the uh, West Mountain Radio Target Tuner Antenna Controller to keep the re antenna resident on the frequency that we're operating on. Yeah, Roger, Ray. Uh, roger that. Yeah, I've got uh, quite a bit of blow by coming around. Uh, and I'm not sure why, but I'm sure I'm giving as good as I'm getting. So, uh, you know, if they want to uh, do that, then uh, they can uh, certainly do that. Anyway, uh, so you have uh, two or three notes uh, there, Ray. I think we're going to move along here. The first note is, uh, you know, about your compressor, how to get, uh, how to adjust that. We just want about a third of that, three out of 10, 30 out of 100. Uh, and then uh, your AOC is uh, then uh, adjusted to mid scales, two thirds, as you speak fairly rapidly and then as we get to the EQ page we want uh, three clicks uh, treble uh, boost from where you are so you if you have those notes uh, uh, I'll let you uh, go and you can work on those at your leisure Roger oh, and you can work on those at your leisure Roger okay Roger I really appreciate this this has been very helpful so let's go back the time if you have it's difficult to get this done it's very difficult to hear it yourself but I really appreciate your help this afternoon and uh, coming back to uh, I, and, and, and all your help with getting the thing set up. I really, well, on the equalization page, all, I can only go one click above or one click below a zero here on, on the neutral. I'm sorry, repeat that last on the EQ. I'm sorry, repeat that last on the EQ. On the equalization, I can either go, I can go above or below the, the baseline only one click above or one below on eight different stages. What you're saying is you have an eight band EQ, is that a Roger? Is you have an eight band EQ, is that a Roger? I did not understand that. Again, please. Okay, uh, how many uh, positions of equalization do you have? Uh, is it an eight band EQ, or a three band EQ, a two band EQ, or, uh, or, or do you know? Uh, or, or do you know? It's an 8-band, 8-band ETU. Eight. All right. Uh, <laughs> let me give you some more notes. I hope you have notes on the other part. Uh, I'll give you new notes. Everything on that equalizer between uh, 800 cycles and 1.5K should be flat. Everything between 800 cycles and 1.5K uh, should be flat. Then, uh, if we go to the uh, top end, find something uh, EQ-wise around 2.5K, 3K, and uh, that's the one you want to boost uh, three clicks uh, more, Roger. Clicks uh, more, Roger. Okay, Roger, understand, we can only go one click. I'm going to go up one click, that's all we can do. Uh, why is that? Why is that? Oh, okay, I think I understand. Uh, right now, I've got the left two bars have are, are, are up. The third, fourth, fifth, sixth bar are flat. And the last two bars are up. Uh, you understand? Uh, are the last two bars the uh, top end of the audio spectrum or the bottom end? Top end of the audio spectrum or the bottom end? I'm thinking it will be the top end, the one to the right. I, I got to look at the book and see how they have it scaled. But normally it scales from the left to right, uh, lower to upper. Correct? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what, like I say, what we're looking for to boost is something in the uh, 2.5 kc to 3 kc range. Uh, 2.5 k to 3 kc range. We want that up uh, three clicks, Roger. That up uh, three clicks, Roger. Okay, we're up two clicks now. Two clicks at this time. I'll uh, get into the manual here and make those adjustments as soon as I can. 
Roger. Okay, so continue to work the microphone at the corner of your lips. And, um, you know, that's, that's very important because sometimes uh, your transients uh, might get as loud as your words, you know, so you would be effectively QRMing yourself. Would be effectively QRMing yourself. It's a hard habit because I've been so used to flying the airplane, we talk into it. It's, it's, uh, it's going to take some learning for me to learn that, but I appreciate your input and I'm, I'm doing it now. Is it making a difference? Uh, yes, sir, it does. Now, you can solve the problem in a big way if you go down to your local music store and get yourself a foam windscreen, and you can put that foam windscreen right over that mic, and you can you can talk to it any way you like, you upside down, sideways. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. That foam windscreen will solve the problems, Roger. Foam windscreen will solve the problems, Roger. Okay, very good. I may, I may do that when I find a shop someplace. Okay, I'm looking at the uh, scales now on the equalizer, and uh, position number one is 50 kilohertz, number two is 100, three is 200, four is 400 hertz, five is 800, six is 1600, seven is 24, and eight is 32. And currently we are up on the 50 and the 100, and up on the 24 and the 3200. Okay, five and six should be flat. Five and six should be flat. Seven uh, should be plus uh, three over where you are. And uh, uh, the next one up should be plus three over where you are. Up should be plus three over where you are. Okay, right now uh, the first one is up one click. The second one is up one click. Three, four, five, and six are flat. Seven and eight are up one click. Uh, okay, so uh, you should be, i tell you what, you should be flat from uh, uh, five, uh, let's see, six, five, four, three. Uh, you should be flat uh, in those areas, Roger. You should be flat uh, in those areas, Roger. Okay, Roger, but I, I am flat in three, four, five, and six. Three, four, five, and six from... 200 hertz to 1600 hertz is flat. Yes, good. Now, uh, do you still have uh, some po uh, some boost range in that uh, that 2.5 k uh, adjustment? 2.5 k uh, adjustment. Uh, negative, negative. I'm. You only can you only go up one bar. I'm up I'm up as high as I can go. The 2400 hertz and the 3200 hertz. All righty, interesting. Well, uh, I mean, you can, it's all we can do there, uh, unless you uh, change mics and go to an Electret uh, condenser mic. Uh, you know, that would give you a little more, a, a lot more top end. Electret uh, condenser mics uh, have a much more articulated top end, Roger. Much more articulated top end, Roger. Okay, Roger. Well, uh, I'm running remote. I live in the airstream full time, travel over the country, so it's getting things now is not as convenient as it was when I had a home base with six locations. Yes, sir, I understand that. And and we're talking we're talking ideal here, Ray. We're talking um, perfection. So uh, you're really close, uh, you know, in a, in a general way, uh, just looking for that edge, uh, if you know what I mean, just that, uh, the, just a little more articulation. But, uh, you know, uh, and maybe you'll read more about your equalizer to uh, find out how to get a little more top end out of that. Now, the, the other thing is, we could do uh, a, um, a reverse... Um, proximity effect, but uh, that would require a lot of uh, work on your part as far as exact placement of that hand mic. I think we're, we're probably better off where we are. Uh, I think it's I think it's really good. I think uh, I think you'll like it. And uh, you know, if you go to YouTube, do they call it a search for Kilo Charlie Nine Victor Kilo Victor, uh, followed by today's date nine seventeen twenty one? You'll be able to hear your audio, Roger. You'll be able to hear your audio, Roger. Okay, Roger, Roger. I think we had another station coming in here. Is it somebody wanted to come in? The K4TCJ Portland. 
Well, it's a control net, Ray, so uh, I, I, you know, I'm talking to you right now, sir, and uh, I, I thank you for your uh, your effort in dropping by. And uh, again, if you uh, go to YouTube and do that call letter search for KC9PKV, followed by today's date, 9-17-21, uh, you'll be able to uh, hear your uh, recording. Give us uh, a couple of days to get it uploaded, Roger. A couple of days to get it uploaded, Roger. Well, Roger, Roger, thank you so much, and I really appreciate your help this afternoon, and I will make myself hold the microphone sideways as I am now. <laughs> Every little bit helps, even for an old man like me. I don't do this as much as I used to, but uh, I really appreciate your help this afternoon very much. Definitely do. Roger, Roger, sir. Well, let me say 73 to you, and if you get a chance, uh, join us uh, next uh, Friday. Uh, where we'll do it all again, and we'll uh, see if you have managed to consult the book and uh, make those uh, uh, note corrections that, that we gave you. This is uh, KC9 VKV, the Friday afternoon Kiso VLOG net. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. AK4 FU, over. There was somebody, <laughs> stay and try it again there, phonetically. Try it again there, phonetically. This is AK4FU, over. Roger, AK4FU, sir. Um, come back and uh, you're very noisy on your microphone. Try not to move your hands much on your microphone. It's uh, Those noises are almost as loud as your audio, Roger. Noises are almost as loud as your audio, Roger. Roger, Roger. Um, is this any better? Yes, sir. I can hear you well. Before the uh, background noises of, of the my, the hand noises on that microphone were uh, almost as loud as your your voice, Roger. So, uh, uh, what we got to? What's your name, sir? So, uh, uh, what we got to? What's your name, sir? The name here is Frank. I'm in Mooresville, North Carolina. I think I just blew up my 811H, so I'm back to uh, 100 watts. Well, gosh, you're uh, doing well with 100 watts. It looks to be uh, about a 10 over uh, my noise level. Well, actually, over Milford uh, SDI noise level, Roger. Milford uh, SDI noise level, Roger. Roger. I mean, crystal clear, great sounding audio, by the way. Crystal clear, great sounding audio, by the way. Uh, my audio? Uh, my audio? QSL, it's excellent. It's like uh, broadcast quality. I mean, it sounds really, really good. Thank you so very much, sir. And a lot of it has to do with a, a foam windscreen. Uh, I am uh, right up in, I'm touching, actually touching the microphone with uh, the foam windscreen there. And that makes uh, such a difference. It just uh, uh, takes care of all of the problems that might be coming out of your mouth other than the words, Roger, like plosives and uh, all that kind of stuff, Roger. And, uh, all that kind of stuff, Roger. Roger that. Uh, what's your QTH, over? Uh, we are centrally located, well, I say centrally located, we're on the Indiana side of the Ohio River, right at Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, of course, home of fast women and beautiful horses. Home of fast women and beautiful horses. Oh, QSL, for sure, yeah. I was uh, formerly out of uh, Miami Beach, Florida, you know, where the girls are always pretty and the beer is cold. Yes, sir. My hometown is West Palm Beach, so uh, I, I can sympathize with your situation there. Of course, you know, by now it's all pretty much just Spanish, Roger. No, it's all pretty much just Spanish, Roger. Oh, Roger that. I just retired about five months ago from uh, the county hospital there, and uh, I had to move back to the south. I missed it. Ah, uh, Roger that. So, uh, Frank, what radio are you running, sir? So, uh, Frank, what radio are you running, sir? I have a 746 Pro, and on a, running on an NFED wire about 130 feet. Uh, Roger that. Well, we have a generic setup procedure for that radio if you might be interested. Uh, starts uh, with uh, you engaging your compressor at a 3, a token amount, but uh, it does exactly what we need it to do, Roger. It does exactly what we need it to do, Roger. Roger that. Uh, let's try that right now.
All right, let me know when you've uh, achieved uh, three on your compressor. Achieved uh, three on your compressor. Do you have a copy on AK4FU? I do. I do. Is that sounding any better? Well, let's see. You tell me. We're at a three. What is your input? Is that like a three out of ten or a hundred out of uh, thirty out of a hundred? Uh, looking for a three out of ten or hundred. <laughs> we're looking for a three out of ten or a thirty out of a hundred on the input level to the compressor. Thirty out of a hundred on the input level to the compressor. Uh, QSL. Now I'm at three right now. I think what's throwing it off is I have a very old uh, ICOM SM8 microphone. Uh, I like it because it's dual connection. I can run uh, my uh, dual band and uh, my HF rig off the same mic. Yes, sir, uh, Frank. What you need to do, sir, I think is work this mic a little tighter. I'm uh, starting to hear room noise, and we don't want that. You know, I understand that uh, usually our shacks are less than professional studios, but uh, the closer we work the microphone, the, uh, the better uh, we are as far as uh, solving our acoustics problem. So uh, is, is that a desk mic or a hand mic, sir? Um, is, is that a desk mic or a hand mic, sir? Yeah, Frank, you've uh, kind of slipped down into the uh, end of my noise level. Uh, come back and uh, tell me again uh, uh, what uh, that mic is. It is. Is it a desk mic or a hand mic? Uh, that mic is. It is. Is it a desk mic or a hand mic? It's a desk mic. Is this any better right now? Well, you, you need to work closer. You need to be about three or four inches off that mic. Otherwise, you're going to start picking up room noise. And that does not uh, help uh, as far as uh, uh, articulation of the microphone. Uh, so uh, work that microphone about uh, three or four inches, and we'll probably have to uh, turn it down a little bit. But uh, three or four inches, Roger. A little bit, but uh, three or four inches, Roger. Uh, Roger, Roger. Uh, I'll give you a count. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. How is that? Okay, what uh, you need to do now is, that's a good position on the microphone to be working at that close, but I want you to go to your AOC with a mic gain in hand, and I want you to adjust your AOC for mid-scale to two-thirds. Mid-scale to two-thirds on your AOC by way of mic gain manipulation, and you'll have to go like 100, 200, 300, 400, a, a pretty quick cadence to get that AOC meter up to where you can see what it's doing. Meter up to where you can see what it's doing. Yep. 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 up. I'll try that right now. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. Alrighty, so you're running now like a mid-scale to two-thirds on the AOC? Running now like a mid-scale to two-thirds on the AOC? Oh boy, well we got, uh, we got neighbors moving in uh, about 2kc off with a lot of garbage. I don't know why they do that. I mean, you know, we've only got 10 minutes left on this um, network and we'll be done. They, uh, you know, good taste is at least 3KC off, you know. And I don't know why anybody would go 2KC off and think that they've done something good. Anyway, um, uh, Frank, uh, so just to review uh, for the moment what we're doing, we've got our compressor engaged on at a 3, and then we went to our AOC with mic gain in hand and adjusted the, the mic gain, uh, the AOC reading for mid-scale to two-thirds by way of the mic gain control, Roger. Mid-scale to two-thirds by way of the mic gain control, Roger. Roger, Roger. All right, and now, uh, why don't you give me about uh, 10 seconds or so and tell me about your antenna system. 10 seconds or so and tell me about your antenna system. Roger, 
Roger that. I am running an infed wire. It's a 9 to 1 Balin, and it's 130 feet, approximately 40 feet off the ground. Over. Roger, Frank. Okay, now, do you know where your uh, onboard equalization is uh, for that radio? Onboard equalization is uh, for that radio? Uh, no, sir, I don't. This radio is new to me. I've had it like two days. Yes, sir, I understand. Note to self, note to self, when you find out how to get to your EQ page, you want to crank in uh, 3 dB, 3 clicks treble boost from where you are. Uh, additional 3 clicks treble boost from wherever you are at the moment. Roger? Boost from wherever you are at the moment. Roger? Roger, Roger. Let me, I'm going to whip out the book. Hey, thanks so much for your help. I mean, it's really been great. I need to uh, get on this book and uh, do some more reading. Like when we say RTFM, you know, I'm an old IT guy, and uh, I need to read this manual. But I just thank you for your assistance. It's been very helpful, over. Yes, sir, Frank. Roger, roger. Well, that's what we do, sir, and I thank you for dropping by. And again, uh, we'll be posting this up on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9 Victor Kilo Victor, uh, followed by today's date, 9-17-21, that will take you directly to uh, this recording. Roger? That will take you directly to uh, this recording. Roger? Roger, roger. Thank you so much, and I will do that. Have a wonderful day. 73 is my friend. Roger, roger, Frank. 73, sir. Have a great afternoon and a beautiful weekend coming up. This is uh, KC9 VKV, the Friday afternoon. QSO VLOGNET. Got about 10 minutes till 5. At 5, we turn into a pumpkin. So, if you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Kilo Zero, Kilo Yankee Echo. Yankee Echo Station, come back slowly, phonetically with your call sign. Station, come back slowly, phonetically with your call sign. Kilo Zero, uh, Kilo Yankee Echo. Kilo Yankee Echo, Roger, Roger, what's the name there, sir? Kilo Yankee Echo, Roger, Roger, what's the name there, sir? Uh, hold on just a second. Stand by. I'm uh, sitting by, if that's all right. I'll, I'll sit by and <laughs> wait for you to return. Return. For you to return. Return. Okay, I'm back, Jim. Sorry. The name here is Kyle Kilo Yankee Lima Echo. I had to get on frequency. I was. I could see that I was off just a touch. I've checked in with you in the past uh, on my old Diazer radio. Uh, just checking in at the end of the program to see if it still sounds as good uh, given the settings that we decided on the last time we spoke many uh, weeks ago, months ago possibly, and back to you. Yes, sir, sounds very good. Now, uh, whereabouts are you located, Cal? Yes, sir, sounds very good. Now, uh, whereabouts are you located, Cal? I'm in north central Iowa, about 60 miles north of Des Moines. Roger, Cal, and what radio are you running, sir? Roger, Cal, and what radio are you running, sir? Uh, this is an old Yezu uh, FT 101EE uh, with a uh, uh, static uh, D104 power mic and um, using a that's uh, tuned up with an old Johnson Viking matchbox. Uh, over. Yes, sir. Well, I've got you on my uh, local antenna, and I just uh, put in today uh, antenna input. Uh, um, uh, well, display, so uh, folks can see uh, what I'm doing when I'm doing it. Uh, I have uh, two displays. One is the antenna input, which has a six-position light system that follows my my six-position rotary switcher that I'm switching my antennas with. And then I have a, a six-position um, uh, indicator that uh, shows whether I'm on my uh, my local radio or uh, which SDR I might be on. So it's all it's all new to me, and I'm I'm trying not to get confused on my own system. But uh, as long as I do my thing and don't look what's happening, everything's fine because it it's automatic uh, that it reflects what I'm doing. Supposedly, hopefully, Roger. Uh, Roger that. Uh, which so I'm on the uh, your local antenna. Yes, sir. Right now you're on my uh, loop uh, one, which is uh, my uh, hmm, my zero degrees. Actually, my 90 degrees. You're on my 90 degree antenna, Roger. It should work out that way. Okay. Well, 
uh, I'm curious to hear hear my signal, and and uh, and that's why I call. I, I think we have this radio set up about to its optimal performance uh, uh, based on on uh, signal reports that I get from other folks, and, and uh, so I won't keep you long. I, maybe others want to check in with the net, and so I think I will uh, uh, back on out of here. This is K0KYE. Uh, and I'll, I'll be uh, listening out. Roger, Cal, sounds good. Uh, looks to be about a 3 dB dynamic range, so uh, you're nice and fat, and you have uh, rather good articulation. I, again, uh, if you had one more click of uh, treble boost that you could crank in, uh, that would uh, help just a tad. Uh, uh, but if not, it's fine the way it is. But if you have one more click of uh, treble EQ you could throw in there, uh, it would just be ideal. Roger. Okay, Jim. Well, the only thing I can change on this is the mic gain and the and the power amplification on the microphone. There's no treble, no bass, no nothing other. Uh, that's it. So, uh, anyway, seven three. Thanks for doing what you do. I uh, really enjoy listening to uh, your YouTube broadcast. Yes, sir. Well, I remember that radio now. <laughs> and uh, so let's do the. Um, Let's do the proximity effect equalization. Uh, pull back one half inch further <laughs> than where you were. That would boost your uh, EQ by one click top end, Roger. Uh, there's a half inch. How does that sound? Excellent, excellent. That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to have to get a ruler on this thing, I guess. Yeah, Roger, get you a coat hanger with a a, a, a rag turned uh, tied around the end of it, you know, like when they, they haul lumber, you know, one of those red things. Oh, well. Okay, Jim, 7-3, thanks again. Uh, this is K0KY. Roger, 73 there, Cal. You have a great afternoon, a beautiful weekend. This is a KC9 VKV, the Friday afternoon QSO VLOGnet. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Whiskey Beaker 9, Mike There is a Whiskey Baker 9 in my life. Uh, come back slowly phonetically with the call sign. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Jim. It's Whiskey Bravo 9, Mike Sierra Point. Mike Sierra, Mike, Roger. Now check your frequency. Uh, you uh, seems to be maybe a uh, low or high. I'm not real sure, but uh, uh, check it. We're on uh, 1.7. Uh, I'm sorry, 7.1880000. Roger. Yeah, I uh, I do not have a, a frequency counter on here. I'm doing it by eye, and uh, you sound pretty darn good to me. Uh, so. I was trying to do it based upon your voice, but I must be a little off. Uh, I talked to you last week there, Jim, just briefly. Oh, yes, is this the uh, Swan Radio? Yes, that is a correct. That is correct, Jim. Very good memory. That is correct. Yes, sir. Well, you know, i tell you what. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have an MFJ uh, antenna analyzer around, would you? No, no, I do not. Uh, I know you can use those for a frequency counter, but I don't have one of those. Over. Yes, sir. That's what I was thinking. But uh, okay, in lieu of that, in lieu of that, uh, maybe uh, you could uh, take a look at um, oh Amazon uh, Prime uh, and see what the tariff on a uh, pre counter might be, because you you really need one with that radio. I mean, uh, you know, it's. Um, uh, eyesight's not good enough uh, for that radio. You need to you need to bring that radio up to the uh, current standards, you know. And uh, a free counter would just uh, solve, I think, most of those problems, Roger. Oh, you're 100 percent correct. They've got my feelers out there for a, uh, a counter, uh, Jim. I'm trying to get a hold of a counter, and uh, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm trying to get one that matches the radio, of course. And they have some nice ones out there, but there's not many of them around. So I just wanted to jump in and say hello. Uh, you got just a very, very nice signal, and I really enjoy listening to you uh, uh, talk to all these uh, guys about their audio and how they sound and whatnot, Jim. That's very, very interesting. 
Yes, sir. Now, can you hear in most cases the other side of the conversation uh, other than just mine? Uh, you know, I haven't been able to hear a lot of the other guys except the last gentleman that was just on, uh, the fellow with the Yesu ft 101 E. I heard him very, very well, and he was coming in pretty good. Roger. And uh, what's the name there? Yeah, the name here, Jim, is Denny. Delta Echo Nancy Nancy Yankee. Uh, we're here in Wisconsin. Roger, Wisconsin with the swan. Roger, Roger. Yeah, I think you really like that uh, frequency counter because it would just uh, solve. I think once you get to the right frequency, I think the swan will hold the frequency fairly well. Ex on, uh, f you know, like uh, 80, 40, whatever, you know. It might tend to want to wander a bit. Uh, on. Does it have a 10 meter capability? Yes, it does, uh, Jim. I actually have two of these swans. I have the 700 and I got the 500, so I have two of them. Uh, you can see the picture on QRZ. Uh, but yeah, it's beautiful. They're like brand new. They're like brand spanking new. But uh, yeah, they go on 10, but I, I really don't plan to use them on those frequencies. Uh, I got them mainly for uh, 40 and 75 meters. Yes, sir. So you should have no no problem there with a the free counter uh, holding that, uh, that frequency. I know I had... Uh, a uh, Drake, uh, do I still have a Drake TR4C? I haven't used in some some years, but uh, I remember uh, running uh, 10 meters with that radio, and a beautiful radio. But uh, it did require a lot of uh, a touch up, uh, just constantly touching up the frequency, and because uh, it when that radio was built, uh, uh, 10 meters was a, a quite a stride. Uh, uh, f for that radio to hit and, and maintain the, the frequency. I tried, um, you know, it, it all is about the uh, oscillator, and I tried uh, to uh, blow the oscillator to keep it cool, you know, and then I tried to um, to heat the oscillator to uh, to uh, hold the heat inside and, and bring it up to a, a certain temperature, but I, I, none of those uh, seemed to work. It just wanted to to drift all the time. But it was, I love the radio, but it just, you know, at 10 meters, it did drift a lot. Yeah, I understand, I understand. Well, hey, I just wanted to jump in there before you go, Jim. My one question for you is, what radio are you running right now? I never did hear you say. Roger, Roger. This is an old Yezu FT-990. It's about a 35 or 40 year old radio and it's been pretty heavily modified uh, transmit and receive uh, down to uh, 100 cycle capability on, on the bottom end which uh, you know it really is helpful when we're listening for folks in their uh, you know setups uh, in the audio spectrum. Roger. Yeah, you bet. Wow, I just can't begin to tell you. Uh, I wish I had a good recording system. Uh, I'd love to uh, have you hear what it sounds like. It's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, uh, you're coming into Wisconsin with a very, very nice signal, and the audio is perfect. Uh, well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And, you know, in, in recording... Uh, we uh, try to get as best recording as possible, so uh, we don't want a bunch of AGC suck up between words and stuff like that, which destroys the the integrity integrity of the original transmission. So we we run a very light uh, RF gain front end uh, to uh, make sure that we're not in any uh, AGC compression. We also run with usually a antenna. Um, uh, attenuate on so we don't uh, run problems with overload and uh, so then you know we do very well our s signal comes in um, and we do run the um, AGC uh, in s the slow mode but not in compression it, it uh, seldom goes into compression but it is there uh, as a limiter just in case uh, some uh, 60 over somebody cranks in uh, everything's going to still stay together Roger yeah, very, very good. Well, I didn't realize uh, uh, you were operating that old of a radio. I also have a kid with TSA-90 uh, that I use mainly on each of, uh, to be honest with you. That's my uh, other station. And then I've got a real uh, small station. i got an uh, Elecraft uh, T2 that's only 4 watts, 
where it could be 100 watts, but I use it mainly for QRP. But I'll lay it on the line with you. I like playing around with these swans. And what you said is exactly what I'm doing, sir. One of these times I'm going to check in and I'm going to have that frequency counter. Yes, sir. And I'll be able to tell you, you do have that. <laughs> I'll know immediately when you when you come in uh, on frequency and I'll say, ah, oh, you have a frequency counter. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I just can't wait till when I can do that, Jim. Well, I don't want to take any more of your time, sir. I just really appreciate chatting with you. Uh, I really enjoy uh, listening. And uh, very, very interesting uh, what you do there. So 73, my friend, and uh, nice chatting. Kilo on Charlie 9, uh, Victor Kilo Victor, Whiskey Baker 9, Mike Sierra. Mike will be uh, saying 73, Jim, and I'll look forward to uh, talking again sometime in the future. Roger, Roger, Denny, 73, sir. Uh, thanks for dropping by. I appreciate it. And uh, get a chance to join us next Friday. And gosh, it's uh, five past five, sir. I've been a pumpkin for five minutes. And, uh, well, i got to get out of here. So. <laughs> so we appreciate everybody that uh, dropped by. And uh, if you did, and if you wanted to hear your audio, uh, we have recorded uh, the whole thing. And uh, we'll be taking it to YouTube in the next couple of days. So you, you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, uh, followed by today's date, 9-17-21, will take you uh, directly to this recording. So now uh, we will be returning this frequency back to normal amateur radio use. This is KC9 VKV Clear.